In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the read-only keyword in c -sharp. Now, what does the read-only keyword do? Well, the read-only keyword is what's called an immutable data type. So what does that mean? It means once you have a value set inside a variable or a field, for example, then you cannot modify that value once it's been set. So what does all that mean and what are the conditions are involved in that process? Let's take a look at a small example here. I have a class called dog. Dog has a constructor that takes one argument called breed, which is the breed of the dog, like a terrier or a chihuahua, for example. I have two private fields right here, breed, and another one representing just a unique ID for every dog we construct. And then I have one public property that gets and also sets the breed of the dog. With the knowledge we've gained so far, if we want users to be able to, say, get the value of the breed, but not set the value, we want to make it read only, then if we have a property like this, for example, that exposes this private field here, then we would simply just remove this set clause right here. So when we try to actually put information into the breed, it's not going to let us. So if I go dog.breed and then try to give it a value, so it doesn't really matter what we put in here, we have an error. And if we hover over that, it says it cannot be assigned to, it is read only. So that is one example on how to make, say, a property read only in C Sharp. But wait, at the start of the tutorial, you talked about fields and variables and things like that. How do I do that using the read only keyword? Well, let's take a look. So let's go back into the dog class now. And what I'm going to do is use the read only keyword. I'm going to undo these changes and put this set clause back in here. So we're now setting the value. But now I'm going to mark this field here as read only. So once I've done that, you can see an error has occurred here. So it's not actually letting me use the set clause anymore. If I hover over that, it says a read only field cannot be assigned to. Then there's a little condition here, except in a constructor. So we can assign it inside a constructor like here and accept an init only setter of the type in which the field is defined or a variable initializer. So <laughs> what does all that mean? It's basically saying when you use the read only keyword, you can define it once. For example, we could define it here and initialize it here. So let's just say every new dog is a chihuahua, for example. It's no problem at all. We're actually setting it, but we're doing it when we declare it. So we declare the variable here, but we're also initializing it. So that is allowed. The other thing we can also do is set it inside a constructor, like inside dog. And we can do this multiple times. As long as it's inside a constructor, it's OK. We can do it a thousand times if we want to. But we cannot set this inside, for example, this property here. We cannot say create a brand new method and set it here. So for example, this isn't going to work. So you kind of see the point here. And even if we access this from outside of our class, so I just make this lowercase now to access the field, you can see it cannot be assigned to except in a constructor. So that's the power of the read only keyword. And there are a couple of reasons you might want to use these. So when working with immutable data types like the read only keyword, you want to use these for things that maybe you want to set up one time, but then you'd never want to modify the value of this. And this is because, for example, if I generate a unique dog ID, for example, I only do this once, but then I don't want this ID to change because each dog has a unique ID associated with it. If I start changing IDs of dogs, then, for example, if we have a bit of software that tracks dogs, so you know the dogs that wear the collar, and if the dog gets lost, they kind of scan the collar or the microchip, and then it uses the ID from that to reference maybe a database and find out where the dog, you know, who the, who the owner of the dog is. And if we, you know, perhaps don't make this read only, then we might have a property or someone calling this application might accidentally change the ID, which could be disastrous. 
So this is why immutable data types are generally used. We want to prevent fellow developers or even users of the software from modifying these values. But for something like an ID where we generate a unique ID for each dog in our system, it's very important we make fields like these read only. So it really depends entirely on your system what you want to do. But it's really good practice to say if you have variables or fields which you do not want the users to modify, then always make these read only for example. So that's one way you could handle this problem. Another condition to do with the read only keyword for example, it can only be used on fields. Now remember fields are what are defined in classes just underneath the class declaration. If I go into my kind of main program here and use it inside a method, so if I define this inside a method, obviously removing private, <laughs> then you can see there's a problem. If I hover over it, it says the modifier read only is not valid for this item. So that's basically saying, okay, you cannot use the keyword read only inside a method, but we can use it at class level. So for example, we can use it here and it's no problem at all. So that will work just fine. But we cannot use this inside methods. There is a different keyword we could perhaps use for that. And that is the const keyword, which we will be talking about as well. The last thing I want to talk about to do with read only is when we can set the value. We can set the value at compile time, which means we can give it a value in our development mode. You know, when the software compiles, that's when the check is done. So I can give a value to breed here. I can say Chihuahua and there's no problem. This is at compile time. Again, inside the constructor, we're setting this value. However, we can also change the value at runtime. So when the software is run, however, we can also initialize a read only field during runtime. So when our software is actually running. So when we construct this dog object right here, the constructor is getting called and then this line of code is executed and this happens during runtime when our software is running. So if I run the software, you can see it sets that value in the constructor. There's no errors and it's no problem. So we can set a read only field at compile time and at runtime. So two different places, but that is the read only keyword in C sharp and why you should use it and also how you can use it.